Hi, I'm Jeff Hirsch here at The Money Show with Elliot Q, and he's the editor and publisher of energyandincomeadvisor.com, and um, of course you do energy, MLPs are one of the things you look at. What is the energy market? There's a cycle that's setting up. MLPs are kind of uh, cheap right now or a little inexpensive. Right. What do you see in the uh, energy and MLP uh, industry? Well, I think in the energy industry, I mean, the big focus, of course, is oil. We've been mm -hmm. on a roller coaster ride in oil since 2014. And I think we're going to remain with sort of lower for longer oil prices. I see oil basically staying in a 40 to $60 range literally for the next few years, uh, probably averaging around $50 a barrel. Between the supply we've got coming on from shale mm -hmm. and OPEC fighting to try to get the price up a little bit, I think we're kind of stuck in that middle range for a while. Um, so who benefits in that environment are companies that have access to low-cost shale plays in the U.S. Um, so the two I would highlight would be the Permian Basin of West right. Texas. Um, every one-mile section, one-mile square, one-mile section of the Permian Basin has a cubic mile of oil-bearing rock right. underneath it. Um, the cost of drilling there, a lot of these companies can make money at $40 a barrel or even lower. Sure. Um, so you're going to continue to see growth in the Permian Basin even if oil doesn't go back to $60 right. a barrel for two or three years. Not, not the oil sands up in Alberta. That's more expensive. That's much more expensive. And uh, also play. the Dakotas and that stuff, right? The Dakotas are a little bit more expensive that you probably need more like 50 to 55 right. to make that um, a, a decent return. But I would also highlight the Scoop Stack region of Oklahoma, okay. Central Oklahoma, as being another low-cost play. Uh, a lot of companies, Continental Resources, have been doing a lot of drilling up there. So I want to look for MLPs that have assets in those types of areas, those low-cost areas. MLPs have come down a bit recently. What's driven them down, and, and what's going to you know drive them up a little bit? Well, I think a couple of factors drove them down last year. One is just you know the volatility we've seen in oil prices and energy mm -hmm. itself. Um, the other one, of course, was concerns that rising interest rates are bad for dividend-paying stocks. Stocks, and MLPs, of course, are a high-yield sector. Um, the truth is that we're seeing an awful lot of growth in some of these names. Uh, for example, a company like Enlink, um, mm -hmm. which owns, which is sponsored by Devon Energy, one of the largest energy producers yeah. in the U.S., has things like natural gas processing plants, pipelines, gathering systems in those low-cost shale plays I just mentioned, like right. the Permian Basin and um, Central Oklahoma. And so they're seeing rising volumes moving through those pipelines. That means more cash flow for them. As those areas expand and see more and more production growth, you're just going to see more volumes coming out of those areas, and that's, that's good for a name like Enlink. Any impact from uh, either positively or negatively from the infrastructure build out out of the new Trump administration and, and that sort of thing? It seems to be that there's some uh, you know, slowing down of that, of that progress now that we're halfway through, almost halfway through the, the, first, the first year. Right. I, I don't know if the infrastructure bill would be a huge boost for it. I do think that, on balance, the Trump administration is a little bit more friendly to the energy industry than, say, a Clinton administration would have been. Um, so you're likely to see more pipelines or more pipeline approvals, less resistance, less regulation, at least from the federal level. Um, so I think that's, on balance, a good thing for MLPs. Excellent. Thanks very much, Elliot. Thank you. Thank you guys for joining us.